Hi, this is Kirk, the Bariatric Carnivore. Well, it's my favorite time of year again. It is mid-March in Oklahoma, which means we are finally getting adequate expo sun exposure to improve vitamin D synthesis in the skin. This is like free medical treatments that I get every single year. And I am excited about it because from somewhere around end of October until mid-March, the sun, you just can't get enough sun exposure north of, if you're north of Atlanta, it's tough to get enough sun exposure to get adequate levels of vitamin D. And you can't get enough sun at that time of year. But this time of year, you can. And it has tremendous health implications that I wanna get into. So the first one that you get from having adequate levels of sun exposure is free vitamin D. And I'll let me put a couple of caveats on there. Uh, one of them is this. Look, if you're grossly overweight, uh, you're gonna have a tough time with this one. You're not gonna get enough vitamin D levels uh, from sun exposure because vitamin D is a fat soluble vitamin hormone that is going to, in if you're fat, sorry, you just don't get vitamin D or enough of it. So it's inadequate for most people that are flat out obese. So talk to your doctor about how to supplement in order to make that happen. This video really isn't for you if you're metabolically unhealthy. I'm sorry, but you know, I this is the part I can't really get my head around. I don't know if the low levels of vitamin D, which are chronic in the United States, are because of poor metabolic health or because of the obesity epidemic, but we have ridiculously low levels of vitamin D that keeps showing up in all the studies, yet um, I don't know if it's something that you can supplement your way out of or sun exposure if you're metabolically unhealthy. So, you know, everything I'm gonna be talking about today is really based on the idea that you are really working and being, you know, working on low carb, getting yourself metabolically healthy because that's where sun exposure really comes into play. So, you know, and it's amazing, about 15 minutes or so of sun exposure a few times a week will produce adequate levels of vitamin D at absolutely zero cost which is to me terribly exciting. Now here's something that you probably don't, aren't aware of um, when it comes to the synthesis of vitamin D or doing supplements for vitamin D and how long it takes from it, when you start taking a supplement or when you start getting sun exposure, how long does it take before it actually increases the vitamin D in your bloodstream? The answer is about two weeks. That's, that to me was fascinating. You know, when you see, you know, when you're trying to make a health change and you're going out mid-March, you will not see the increased vitamin D levels in the bloodstream as far as any tests are concerned for almost two weeks. So if you're trying to utilize, say you have an elective surgery coming up uh, and you decide, well, I'm gonna go out and get some sun, increase my immune system, you have to give yourself two weeks lead time at least to increase the amount of vitamin D that's actually useful to help your immune system. So two weeks lead time. So the sun exposure I'm starting to get right now, I will actually start to see my blood sometime in mid-April. But I'm looking forward to it because I try to get out at least you know three or four times a week, go for a walk, get at least 20 minutes or so of sun. Now, why would I really care about that? Well, vitamin D, the reason why I got so interested in vitamin D was actually during COVID. And there was all these new studies that came out of Italy that showed that the people that were really the hardest hit, the ones that were in the ICU, had ridiculously low levels of vitamin D. And I mean, dangerously low levels. Um, and then they started doing studies in other places and they said, yeah, people that are really having problems with COVID have very low levels of vitamin D. Now, there's always that question mark, did the vitamin, did they get depleted of vitamin D after they went to the hospital or before, or is that, you know, before and after? And there were some studies that somebody did that I thought were rather brilliant, where they had actually had tested vitamin D. And those who had the lowest vitamin D levels on their earlier tests were the ones that were hardest hit with COVID, which means, yes, it does play a role in your immune system to me. 
And then uh, Spain did a limited test where they were able to collect, there's two forms of vitamin D. There's the one that, you know, if you take, if you give somebody a, a vitamin D supplement because they're sick, yeah, it takes two weeks before it gets into their system. But you can give another form of vitamin D, which is the one that's already synthesized in the blood, and you can inject that, and that gets into your system within two hours. And when they gave that to people that had COVID, uh, the people they gave it to, it was a split test where they had half of them get it, half of them not. The people that got that form of vitamin D, none of those guys went to intensive care, never went on a ventilator. That was not to be said for the people that did not get it, unfortunately. Um, you know, it had a dr pretty dramatic effect. So, you know, vitamin D, as far as your overall immune health is concerned, is fantastic. And the higher it is, the better you are at fighting off infections, the stronger your immune health is going to be. Which brings me to why I really dislike our psychopathic public health system. Because that was known. That was knowable. And what did they tell us to do? Did they tell people to go out in the sun and walk and get some exercise and build up their immune health? No. How many people ever heard any public health official talk about getting adequate sun so that you could, you know, and as soon as I found out about vitamin D in the sun, and it was mid-March by that point when really things started going nuts, I was out every day for an hour walking in the sun without a shirt on trying to maximize my vitamin D exposure, um, just my own preventative health thing. But I never heard that from a public health official. What were they saying? Stay six feet away from each other. Well, they admitted last year that they just made that up. But they knew that vitamin D would work as far as improving survivability and how low levels were dangerous. Yet there was no mention about vitamin D. I wonder why. Because vitamin D through sun exposure cost zero. There's no cost to this. It is free resource from nature itself that will only improve your immune system. And that's not the only thing vitamin D does for you. This stuff is involved in almost all of your major systems in your entire body. It can only serve to make you healthier. It will help your sexual health. It will help bone, bone health, muscle growth. It is tremendous stuff. So the higher your vitamin D levels are, the better off you are. And if you're not sure what they are, frankly, get a test. I mean, it doesn't cost that much. It costs about 20 bucks to get your vitamin D level tested. You don't need your doctor's permission. You don't have to tell anybody. You just order the test online, go to a lab. They will test it for you. And you know, it's frank, it's frank, it is only about 20 bucks to get that tested and you can see where it is. And if it's like in you know, a paltry 10 or 20, you got a problem. And frankly, most of us, you know, they get really low during the winter because we just don't get the sun exposure. So, you know, it, there's a real question mark though as to how to improve it. You know, uh, some people, I, I do a two-fold thing during the winter months. I go to a tanning bed and I take a vitamin D supplement with vitamin K2 in it during the winter months from October to mid-March. This time of year, I'm walking in the sun. So that is one way to get free stuff to help improve your immune health, your sexual health, your bone health. Every part of your body is only going to improve by getting 15 minutes or so of ex sun exposure around noon every day. Now, not, that's not always possible for everybody, but try to. <laughs> and you know, which means maybe you need to go out and start eating your lunch outside or Go for a walk, you know, sometime around noon, wherever you happen to be. And the more of your skin that you can expose, the better off you are. So I'm one of these guys that, you know, I'm, it's not pretty, but I will be running around without a shirt on because I want maximum sun exposure. Now, vitamin D is not the only thing you get when you get sun exposure, especially for a guy like me. Because I, yeah, my blood pressure tends to be on the high side. One of the other things you get from sun exposure is nitric oxide. 
it is a very powerful uh, thing that once it gets into your system, this is what helps relax your blood vessels and your arteries. It's anti-inflammatory. And it will, probably reduces my blood pressure as much as, you know, my low, I used to take low doses of lisinopril and I don't have to take that anymore. And one of the reasons why I think that's the case is because I've been getting more adequate levels of vitamins uh, or nitrous oxide through sun exposure. And the more you get, the lower your blood pressure is going to get. So check it. I mean, it, it's kind of an amazing thing. But remember, you know, there's sometimes a, a lag time between when you start getting the exposure and when you're going to get the effect. So it's two weeks for vitamin D from once you start getting the sun exposure until it starts to have an effect. Uh, I, and I don't know about the, the effect on nitrous oxide, how long of a lag time that is. But, you know, keep that in mind. So try to get, you know, sun exposure for a couple of weeks, see if it lowers your blood pressure. It might. Um, it has a pretty darn powerful effect. So those are two really great effects that come from getting at least 15 minutes of sun exposure a few times a week. Look, I've, we've always, almost always historically looked at people that have a nice healthy tan as people that are healthy. Why? Well, frankly, I think it was kind of a biological signal that your immune system is going to be really high and you're going to have that levels of nitrous oxide. You know, they're powerful things and they cost nothing. But the only time you can get that exposure if you're north of Atlanta is between March and October. And I really do enjoy it. Now, I get a twofer. I always try to, you know, when I get my sun exposure, I don't just go lay out in the backyard. Um, I want to go out and walk. Now, you may be thinking, well, why are you walking all the time? Well, it's, a, it's kind of a twofer thing. Um, I don't think walking by itself, unless it's the only exercise you can do, it's, it, to me, that's activity. It's not really exercise. But you can do things to make it more challenging, more fun, if you're kind of weird like I am. You know, where, you know, it's like, look, just walking isn't going to be challenging me enough. You know, it's... There, I do several different types of walks. If I've got an hour or so where I can just enjoy myself, I will actually use it as a way of just kind of relaxing. I, I grab some uh, podcasts that I want to listen to and stuff like that, and I'll just take off my shirt and I'll just go for a nice you know, walk for an hour, get lots of sun, and that to me is relaxing and, you know, and some activity. You know, and there's nothing wrong with just walking because it just helps get the glucose out of your, you know, major muscles in your legs and, you know, it's just good activity, but it's not going to improve your lung health and it's not going to increase your muscle mass or anything like that, but it's good activity. I will sometimes, though, only have 15 minutes where I can do a short walk. Well, how do I kick that up a notch? Well, what I'll do is sometimes I'll do what's called a farmer's carry. Well, I'll grab a couple of barbells and I'll do a mile long walk that takes me about 15 minutes carrying two heavy dumbbells, which improves my grip strength and core and balance by trying to hold those things and go for, you know, and that's kind of a challenge walk. And man, I'm telling you, that'll make your forearms burn by the time you're said and done. And, or the other one is where I'll do an offset thing where I'll just grab, you know, a kettlebell or a, uh, just a heavy dumbbell and hold it in one hand and I'll go half the route holding it with one hand and then switch hands to the other part. And that again is a challenge to the core and, you know, you're holding the heavy weight and you're building up grip strength, etc. So that's one way of doing it, another way of doing it. The other way I'll do it, and I did that this today, is what's called rucking, where I, my kids, a few years ago for my birthday, got me a uh, weight vest. It kind of looks like a tactical vest or a bulletproof vest, so I get some funny looks sometimes when I wear it. But um, what it is is just a, a vest that I can put up to 50 pounds worth of weight in it, and I'm walking around, and it just is an extra stress on the walk and I did about three miles today wearing this, you know, I think I got 35 pounds in it right now, walking around with an extra 35 pounds on my body. And that again, stresses the body, 
makes the walk a little bit more challenging and you know helps improve your overall metabolic health so all these things you know are ways of getting the sunshine that you need to get you the nitrous oxide gets you the vitamin d at zero cost you're doing a little bit more activity making yourself a little bit stronger but this is where it gets a little bit more fun too and please if you have been if you've been doing low carb for a while if you've gotten rid of the vegetable seed oils have you noticed that you're not as photosensitive as you used to be i am one of these people that i mean I used to just go out every year about this time and do a half an hour's worth of lawn yard work with a shirt on and I get a horrible sunburn. That happened to me almost every year, this time of year, every single time. I all of a sudden I switched to low carb, I get rid of the vegetable seed oils, and I noticed I'm not getting burned. It doesn't happen to me anymore and I couldn't figure out why and then I started noticing comments that other people that were uh, low carb, gotten rid of vegetable seed oils, had the same thing. And I have not seen any studies that show a lower lowering of photosensitivity for people that have gotten rid of seed oils. I don't know what the cause is, but I just know that it, it seems to be a thing. It seems to be a truism. There's so many anecdotal evidence, uh, stories about people who are less photosensitive. So if you're one of those people that are less photosensitive now that you've gotten rid of the vegetable seed oils, can you please leave a comment down below? Because I don't think enough people really understand that when you switch, your diet you are going to have some a lot of different changes happen to your body and some of them are going to be pretty noticeable like the lack of photosensitivity i mean i found it fascinating that when i went down to costa rica uh in january a couple of years ago uh i never wore sunscreen i wasn't wearing a shirt i was scuba diving i was swimming around i was doing all sorts of stuff and i never wore a shirt and i'm on the equator and i didn't burn which to me is, yeah, I mean, I would have fried. You know, I mean, you leave Oklahoma in January to go down to the equator. I should have fried like a piece of bacon, but I didn't. And I really think that this really boils down to the fact that I'm not as photosensitive as I used to be. Doesn't mean that I'm an idiot about it. I don't, you know, I, I wouldn't go out for more than an hour doing it. But, you know, and if I felt a little warm or tingly i got out you know of the sun but i think you know it is something that seems to be a truism and i'd like to hear if other people have had the same experience now what is frustrating to me is you will not hear about the incredible importance of vitamin d and nitric oxide and this free sun exposure and how it will improve your health because we've got this horrible dysfunctional system and nobody can make any money off of this. This comes at zero cost, but can only do you good. How many people have ever heard from their doctor that, boy, you need to get about 15 minutes of sun exposure three times a week? Crickets. Nobody's doctor tells them this stuff. Frankly, that's why you're probably listening to channels like this because we'll tell you they won't, but it is vitally important. So this is Kirk, the Bariatric Carnivore. I try to put out a couple of messages each week. I will talk to you again soon.